Hello there, it's, uh, what is it? it's Tuesday afternoon and uh, I'm in the kitchen, obviously, you can see that, obviously. Um, it's the week before Christmas, so it's building up for everyone to be a bit manic. Um, I went out just to get a few things for the dish that I'm going to be preparing now. And um, the supermarket was just manic, um, though I did find a like-minded person when I decided to sort of do a 360 degree turn because I didn't know exactly where I was going, what I was about to do. Um, a woman just came up to me with her uh, small child and said, um, yeah, I feel exactly the same as you. <laughs> so there we are, <laughs> everyone getting into the Christmas spirit. Anyway, what am I making today? Well, today it's going to be beet bourguignon. So obviously this is vegetarian. It's not beef bourguignon, which would have a, a lovely cut of beef in it, but it's beetroot bourguignon. Um, and we're going to do it the way I do it. Um, there's a number of different recipes online and you can follow those as well. Though I'm much, I don't like doing things in lots of different stages and lots of different sort of pots. So this is one where apart from cooking, pre-cooking lentils, everything else is done in one pot. So I'm going to show you the ingredients now and get on with it. Okay. <laughs> These are the ingredients for our beet bourguignon. Um, what we have is we have four beetroot. We've got two chioggia here. Um, and then we have, um, I think these are cylindra that I picked the other day. We've got two uh, decent sized carrots. We're going to be using four shallots. You can use onions instead of shallots. Um, these aren't our shallots, sadly. Our shallots didn't really do well at all this year. But anyway, those are shallots. We're going to be using garlic, bay leaves, thyme. Over here, we have our cooked Pre lentils. If you want to use packet cooked pre lentils or beluga lentils, then you can. You do want the firm lentils. You don't want like the orange lentils which go into a, a mush. These will uh, stay pretty whole. We're going to be using a decent amount of mushrooms. Parsnip is going into here as well. These are our frozen parsnips from last year. And then at the back, we have pepper olive oil, red wine, which is obviously the bouillon part of it. And uh, we use bouillon powder, Swiss vegetable bouillon powder, but you can use a stock cube. I think that's about it. If I forgot, oh, and then there's some cornflour or arrowroot, which I've made up here, which we will use to thicken things um, near the end of the cooking time. Anyway, if I've forgotten any ingredients, I'll grab them out of the fridge um, when I remember. Now, you, you can, this is obviously, really, it's a root vegetable stew with, um, with mushrooms and lentils and red wine. That's what it is. If you want to switch things around, you can do, though, though I would stick to root vegetables. If you use pumpkin, um, in this or squash, then they're likely to disintegrate and you end up with a, a creamier, more substantial sort of sauce, if you like, rather than the the red wine, thickened red wine dew that we actually want here. Anyway, crack on with the cooking. So we here we have our prepped ingredients. Most of the prepped ingredients is more there. Um, so what I've done is I've quartered the shallots. These will unravel during cooking. That's fine. I've um, sort of roughly um, quartered and um, in fact, I've put into sixth each of the mushrooms. The carrots and the parsnips have been cut up into sort of chunky pieces. And the beetroot has been left um, chunkier yet. So they were mainly quartered, those. And then we have our garlic here. The garlic is not going to go in with the mushrooms and the um, 
with the mushrooms and the sorry shallots um because we we want to brown these off so we're going to just start cooking now we move that out of the way get our pan in that's there it's great turn the heat on one ingredient that i did forget before was um tomato puree we use two tablespoons of tomato puree as well so that's just the pan's just heating up I'm going to put about a tablespoon and a half of olive oil in there let that heat up a bit as i said before what we're going to do is we're going to brown we, we just want these to get a little bit of brown a little bit of char on them so mushrooms and the shallots quartered shallots going in make sure you stir everything around the shallots as i say they're not going to stay like that sorry i think that was a notification the shallots won't stay like this they will actually all go into individual little slivers but what i'm going to do keep this on a, a medium heat once it's sort of come up hot keep it on a medium heat don't add anything else at the moment because what you want to do is you want to have the uh, the onions uh, the shallots rather and the mushrooms you want to have contact with the bottom of the pan because that's where they're going to brown don't worry if they stick a little bit or you get some um some sort of blackness on the back of the uh, bottom of the pan because we're going to be adding liquid and that will lift off and also that caramelization of the mushrooms and the onions on the bottom of the pan will add to the flavor so i'm just going to stir this around now for about five minutes right so these have been sauteing on a medium high heat for about five minutes you can hear them sizzling i think when i move them they, they, these have effectively been sauteing and sauteing effectively means jump in and so it's jumping in the pan when i move them you'll you'll hear them sort of make a noise that's that's searing is what we want as you can mostly see if i move all these away we've got the bottom of the pan has actually got brown bits on it the mushrooms have also lost a, a lot of their got smaller and lost a lot of their liquid because that has evaporated off and the um the shallots you can see there in particular i think you can see there let me pull that one up of browning at the edges so that's that's great so what we're going to do and the the, the shallots are also becoming become sorry can't speak today the shallots are also beginning to come apart which again is what we want <coughs> excuse me so in go our in fact what i'm going to do is going to put our garlic in first this isn't minced this is sliced and and roughly chopped stir that around <coughs> excuse me in go the carrots the beetroot both the chiogia and the cylindra beetroot and the parsnip stir it all around again we're not worrying at the moment oh, a bit of garlic jumped out we're not worrying at the moment about things sticking to the side of the pan that's just adding to the caramelization of the dish so don't worry about that it's going to carry turning that around in the pan for about two minutes okay again turning this around about two minutes of pretty regular stirring
adding pepper I'm using bouillon powder but you could use a stock cube I'm adding it straight into the pan here it's about a tablespoon of stock and I just turn that around so the everything will get coated if you have a stock cube break it up between your fingers pop it in do exactly the same right now we're going to add tomato puree two tablespoons of tomato puree it's about two you'll notice in a lot of our cooking we um, we don't uh, we're not precise in a lot of our cooking certain things you need to be baking particularly you need to be but when you're cooking something like this you can be much more fluid in what you want so that's the bay leaves in the thyme in okay and that's some of the wine in now you can see it's bubbling what that is going to do is loosen everything on the bottom of the pan all the, the burnt caramel caramelization I find it difficult to say that word okay we just want that all stirred through Great, I'm adding the rest of the wine now. So that's 500 ml of red wine. If you wanted to cook this in a um, slow cooker, this is a, a good time to pop it into the slow cooker and cook it on high for about two hours, something like that. And then you can add more, more wine or more water, depending upon how, um, how it is at the end. This is sort of looking rather lovely at the moment. I think what I'm going to do, you want your bay leaves in the liquid you want all of that well in the liquid I'm just gonna add maybe 200 more mil of uh, water if you want to add wine you could add wine that does mean that you'd have hardly any to drink but we don't drink really now, so that wouldn't bother us. So I'm going to pop a lid on here, turn it on to low, and then I'm going to let that cook for half an hour on a low heat, on, a, on your lowest heat. Okay, so back. It's actually been simmering for 40 minutes. Um, yeah, that's looking nice. Lovely. Let's just get a knife and... Oh, yeah. The... The beetroots, which are the ones which are the largest, which will take longest to cook, are 
softening nicely. What we're going to do now, oh, I just splashed a whole bit there. What we're going to do now, add our cooked lentils. So these are puy lentils, French green lentils that we boiled, we um, washed first of all to get rid of all the dust, soaked for half an hour and then boiled until tender or simmered in fresh water until tender which I think was about 18 minutes something like that. Whenever we cook lentils, uh, these lentils, pre lentils or green lentils, we add a tablespoon of either soy sauce or in our case we add amino acids but you could add a teaspoon of miso paste as well. That just adds to their flavour. So these are going in now. So that's all of them, almost all of them. Okay, stir that all through. And then if you're going to serve this straight away, you need to, well, we're actually going to bring it to the boil and um, let it simmer for another 10 minutes to ensure that the lentils are all cooked through. Um, one thing that you uh, must do when it's all cooked is take out the bay leaves and take out the, the thyme. I might as well do that now. So it's a good thing to remember how many things you have in. So we have two bay and we had three sprigs of thyme. So we need to this is always the thing, hunting that that final sprig of thyme or sprig of something. Is that it? No. It's in there somewhere. Well, never mind, we'll just leave it in there. But do remember to take those out. So there we are. That's beet bourguignon. So 10 more minutes of simmering, and then that's ready to serve.